right, folks, this is called the Re Amiga. This is a, essentially a copy of the uh, Amiga 1200 uh, PCB. This is done, done by Chucky John Hartle, uh, who traced all this. And uh, uh, I decided for, uh, for 2023 to try and build it myself. This is going to be a very slow build. I'm going to take my time. I have very, very little experience with SMD stuff. So I thought it'd be <laughs> it'll be a trial by fire trying to build this thing. Um, luckily, Chuck is provided on his uh, uh, vlog blog website page, whatever it is, uh, a, a very thorough and handy guide in about five parts on how to build this and um, how to step by step test and troubleshoot this. Uh, so we're gonna follow that and. Uh, and hopefully you get some results. The, the cool thing about the guide, and I, I, if you want to take on this project, I recommend reading the guide first, is that it goes through what you should really solder first, uh, how to test those afterwards, um, putting on the power rails, and all that kind of stuff. You can actually uh, do some testing that you've done the right thing. So you're not just spending hours and hours just putting stuff together and then trying to figure out what went wrong, because things will go wrong. Anyway. Uh, let's go. But before that, this video is sponsored by PCB Way. No, oh, come on, no, let no, me no, do it. No. Come on. Anyway, this is just ridiculous. I hate you. PCB Way offers PCB manufacturing services, of course, along with part assembly, but they also offer a number of other fantastic services like CNC, metal sheet fabrication, 3D printing, and even injection molding. Essentially, a one stop service for all your projects. So go to PCBWay.com, upload your project files, and get an instant quote. And thank you to them for. For sponsoring this video so this is chucky's page here chucky is one of the guys that build terrible fire cards for the amiga there's some revision to the board this is revision 1.5 in fact this was sent to me by by chucky and terrible fire they actually sent me uh, an entire amiga 1200 a while back uh, i didn't document this on the channel at the time because i don't know it felt weird to sort of show off anyway uh, so we're gonna follow the guide so the, the guide essentially starts by advising you, telling you to put every resistors and capacitors first. Uh, not the diodes, nothing like that. Just uh, focus first on the resistors and capacitors. Get those little small passives out of the way. Chucky has a very, very handy, uh, amazing uh, PCB locator uh, here. Sorry, uh, fit to window. Uh, component locator for the PCB. So essentially you just select what type of component, capacitors, resistors, uh, which value and it'll tell you uh, on the top and bottom layer where they go. You can see them highlighted in red. That's, I mean, that's super handy. It saved me so much time already um, because time is essentially going to be <laughs> going to be the factor here. And uh, anyway, let's get started. Let's go. Let's do it. Let's do it. Don't stall. Stop stalling. Don't, yeah, be the worst thing to do. Did I ever tell you about my procrastination problem? It's... All right, so I'm about a uh, hundred components in, in just, uh, I did that in a day. This was sort of my practice run to see what it uh, feels like. Um, so yeah, I've about, I mean, I've about a hundred and it looks like I have nothing on this board. You can see the little bumps here, but it actually, I mean, there's, <laughs> there's not much on it. There's a lot here. And what well, first impression is actually, dare I say, it's, it's easier and less messy than a true hole, especially for resistors and capacitors. You don't have to cut legs or anything like that. You have probably, you probably have to be a bit more, uh, deliberate in the way you do things, but other than that, it's uh, it, it's rather pain-free. Yeah, so I think the plan is going to do an order. Uh, I have a big batch of order um, of parts order, and anyway, most of the capacitors, the SMD capacitors and resistors, and I am going to probably 100 at a time every second day or something like that, and make this more of a more of a jog than a sprint, if you know what I mean. So that way I won't, uh, hopefully won't burn out on doing this. Some parts I already started looking at, I can't find on just the one side. So I'm gonna have to order from a few different sites. Uh, right now I'm going through Farnell for Ireland. And then the question of the custom 
ICs, budgie, Lisa, and all that kind of stuff. Um, it might be more problematic. It might be an eBay job or asking favors from friends or whatever. The other thing is we need to probably talk about is the issue of cost on doing this. And I mean, I can foresee this being overall quite costly. This is why I'm going to do it in sections bit by bit but i can see this being far far more expensive to build than actually buying an original amiga 1200 and from what i can see on ebay and here and there you can certainly still do that where so these sort of only make sense as a project or if there's a real real scarcity in uh, in supply so cost wise yeah i'm not sure i i'm not even going to tally how much it costs overall but it's just, uh, I can see this being a, a very expensive build. Anyway, let's keep going. All right, so that's all of the uh, resistors and capacitors in. Um, I lost count at some point, but I think there's the, around the 250 mark here and um, close to 200 here, um, something like that, probably more. Um, it's it's a lot of little uh, bits to solder, but I think I did an okay job. Um, I ended up getting myself one of those uh, flat knife edge uh, type of uh, tip for my uh, for my soldering iron, and I think that works great. Um, I, sh I should probably have gotten one of those ages ago, but it's very handy for these type of stuff. It really gets in the corner. Um, so we have here the let me. There you go. So I have a little light on for the five volt, um, as shown in the uh, guide by Chucky. And here I couldn't find the exact um, a choke uh, that um, was in in the photos that he provided. But uh, he says that he can use ferrite beads, and he actually has them in the uh, in the listing. The, I should have said in the project page. There's also a link to a DigiKey. Is listening listing for all the parts. Um, he's got a, a build of material anyway, um, but you, you'll find the exact parts that he got. So you can get either the same from whatever supplier you uh, choose or uh, similar uh, ones. The connector was uh, 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 gifted to me by uh, Terrible Fire. It's one of the uh, the square ones, as was the um, RGB connector here. But for now, the guide recommends that we just plug this in and check one that um, our 5 volt LED lights up. There you go, yeah. I actually am glad that works well with the black. I'm glad I put a, an orange or yellow um, LED. There's a ticking coming from my uh, power supply. I'm gonna switch it off. Um, it's not that there's a problem with the board. It does that when, if I, if I switch on the power supply on its own, on. Uh, it does exactly that and if I measure the voltages here I get I get uh, for 12 volt I get 14 volts thereabouts for 5 volt I get a voltage that moves between uh, 4.55 and 4.95 and it seems to move uh, over time goes back and forth uh, between both um, and for 12 volt I get close to nothing I've done some research a while back um, online and it seems to be certain power supply that's the behavior uh, when you measure them without load and once they have a load they behave normally but it's interesting uh, some people get that some people don't get that at all and they actually get different different um, results on their power supply so I did read up uh, a bit more and indeed some of the cheaper made so there was a, a few versions of the uh, 1200 power supply and there was a cost reduced one that does indeed behave funny uh, without any load and i've seen people report the same behavior um, so just under five uh, four 450 volts um on the five volt rail uh, over 12 volt on the 12 volt rail and nothing absolutely nothing or very little on the minus 12 volt rail so uh, it's that power supply i checked inside so right now there's not much else i can do to check the voltages the voltages on the board at the test point on the board are the same as the ones uh, right off the power supply so I, I have to trust that um, it's expected behavior. All right, next we need to install these guys. Uh, these are uh, diodes for 
power distribution and things like that. So let's do that. I think there's about um, eight of them or so to install on. And there you go. We got our diode in place. So there's uh, one here, uh, one here, one here, one here, one here. That's five. And uh, there's three here. But the uh, guide, uh, Chucky says not to install them yet uh, because I think this is where we'll get our voltage uh, point. Uh, but next we need to place our crystal here, uh, which I don't have. It's I've uh, ordered one. I thought I had one, but it doesn't quite uh, fit, so I've ordered one. So I'm waiting for that to arrive. It's going to take probably a week. Um, and then after that, we'll just measure that we indeed have an oscillation right at that tiny little point here. Um, uh, it's a handy, handy little point. Uh, unmask just to check and uh, that we get our oscillation once the board is powered so um we're gonna do that and i think this is gonna be all for essentially what is what is phase one um phase two well i need at least budgie and a couple of ic's um to get some sync signal and then after that we're gonna have to source these guys well i need to source this as well so uh, it might be a while for before the next video um uh, these can be uh, expensive i think i have a source for them but i'm gonna pay full price for them really um anyway let's uh let's focus on this first one step at a time all right change of plan for me i just got word that uh two of the uh, things that uh, i'd order won't be here until sometime in mid to end february the um the uh oscillator and the other diodes those kind of three um uh what is it common cathode diodes uh, won't be here until essentially next month so um i think i'm gonna call it a day or at least an episode on this video uh, for this part and we'll continue in the next part we'll uh, we'll do the uh, oscillator i have in the meantime sourced uh, Lisa, uh, which one are they? Uh, Lisa, Gail, Alice and Paula. So these are on the way. I do need to find a good source for a budgie uh, chip next. If anybody knows where I can get one of these, let me know. But uh, so far I'm enjoying the process. Uh, takeaways is take your time. Um, take your time and don't get overwhelmed by everything. Just do things in, uh, in small section. Take your time to do them. Uh, I did I did capacitors first, resistors second. Now I'm putting the diodes. Uh, do follow the guide and uh, and yeah, just use more flux than you think you need <laughs> as well. Um, I have I, um, a terrible fire told me that Chucky has sent me some uh, good flux, so thank you very much for that. But yeah, no, just uh, take your time. Don't get over overwhelmed. It's easier than it looks, and uh, and in, enjoy. I, I usually just put a a podcast or a lengthy video while I'm doing like a batch of uh, 100 or 200 and uh, and then call it call it a night like that. The other thing I want to say is also um, refrain from temptation. I have other parts here that are ready essentially to go on like some of the ICs and that, that kind of stuff. Refrain from doing that. Just follow the guide thoroughly. Just only put the parts you need to put in for now and test things um, afterwards. Uh, otherwise, you'll, you'll get overwhelmed by the potential errors, because I'm sure we'll get errors, um, we'll get mistakes. So just um, test every step of, of the way as shown in the guide, and uh, hopefully, hopefully we'll get, we'll get through this one. Anyway, folks, thank you for watching. I hope this was interesting, and uh, stay tuned for part two.